January the 28th, 1974. From Tromsø in Norway, with a crew of 36 experienced fishermen, the hull trawler Gaul made her final and tragic voyage. Gaul was a large, modern stern trawler with a length of 66 meters. She sailed from Tromsø on the 28th of January and commenced fishing on the following day. She spent the next nine days fishing in the vicinity of the North Cape Bank in company with a number of other trawlers. On the 9th of February, in heavy seas, she was to disappear without trace. The loss of the Gaul was the British fishing industry's worst disaster. The formal investigation that followed concluded that the Gaul capsized and foundered after being overwhelmed by heavy seas. Although many possible causes for her loss were considered, it was hoped by the Court of Inquiry that these would be further investigated. In due course, the Marine Division of the Department of Trade requested the National Maritime Institute to carry out model experiments to examine in detail the ship's seagoing stability characteristics. A model was made to one twentieth scale. It was constructed in wood for experiments in the open sea, as well as various tank facilities. The basic hull was made up to the level of the trawl deck and the forecastle deck. The superstructure was built on separately. All bulwarks and bobbin rails were fashioned in aluminium alloy. Freeing ports were fitted at the deck edge along each side. A number of removable hatches were built into the model to give access to the radio control system, tape recorder, and instrumentation to record motions and other relevant parameters. A moving weight to simulate wind effects was fitted under the wheelhouse. This weight system, together with all the other instrumentation, was radio controlled. For the model experiments carried out by NMI, Gaul's estimated loading condition immediately prior to her loss has been used. This was based on the revised fuel usage and a realistic free surface correction agreed to at the time of the formal investigation. The transverse metacentric height, GM, in this condition would have been approximately 0.64 meters and the center of gravity above the keel, 5.45 meters. The writing levers of the Gaul model for this condition are being measured on the GZ apparatus for comparison with the corresponding static calculations. In general, the agreement was good for the intact condition, but less satisfactory with water on the trawl deck, the measured values being slightly less than the calculated values at the lower angles of heel. This was due to an assumption in the calculations that the water surface corresponded with the bulwark top. Changes in trim due to water leaving the deck were ignored. Experiments in quartering sea conditions, including waves corresponding to those that the Gaul might have experienced in the region on the North Cape Bank, indicated that a large build-up in roll motion did not occur. This was because the frequency at which the waves were encountered did not correspond to the model's natural roll frequency or to multiples of it. Values of instantaneous writing arm were measured with the ship moving among following waves. These agreed well with values calculated on the assumption of stationary waves, thus partly justifying the use of calculated statical stability curves which allow for the shape of the wave surface. On the day of the Gaul disaster, waves up to 15 meters in height were thought to have been in existence in the area of North Cape Bank. 
Waves corresponding to this height and length were generated in number two tank using the towed beam wave maker. These waves were used to subject the model to survival tests at a number of headings relative to the waves. The model survived remarkably well during all of these tests, even when various amounts of water were poured onto the trawl deck from directly above. Amounts of water corresponding to 196 and 320 tonnes were used in the experiments. The intact nature of the model superstructure contributed to its survival by providing large restoring moments at the higher angles of heel and a similar effect may be presumed to apply to the real ship in similar circumstances. However, if the intact nature of the deck house on the Gaul was breached as a result of wave damage, then this would have caused a loss of stability at the larger angles of heel. Experiments were performed in the maneuvering tank at Hasla with the cooperation of the Ministry of Defense. The tests were to determine the increase in roll damping at forward speed and to obtain values of damping coefficients for use in subsequent computations of dynamic stability. The model was set on a straight course at the required speed. A roll of about plus or minus 15 degrees was produced by cycling the inboard moving weight. When the weight was returned to the zero position, a roll decrement curve was obtained. Roll decrement is the rate at which the amplitude decays with time. During sea trials, a similar roll decrement experiment was also made at full scale on the Arab, a sister ship to the Gaul. In this case, movements of the rudder were used to build up a rolling motion. Both sets of experiments gave very similar values of the damping coefficients. A 1 64th scale model was built for wind tunnel experiments to establish the wind loading on the ship at various angles of yaw and heel. The airspeed in the wind tunnel was controlled by a grid to simulate the velocity profile expected at sea. The measurements showed that a steady wind on the port side of the vessel, corresponding to Beaufort 10, would cause a heel of about 5 degrees to starboard. This could increase to seven degrees if the ship was subjected to an additional gust. The effect of beam wind was found to diminish at large angles of heel. To complement the controlled experiments made in the laboratory, the model was taken to Tockland Bay on the Isle of Wight. Here it could be tested in waves corresponding more closely to a scaled-down version of the severe sea conditions that the Gaul might have experienced in the North Cape Bank. Wave boy was deployed for measuring the sea state in the selected test area. The model experiments in waves and the full scale sea trials on the Arab indicated that the sea keeping qualities in moderate and rough seas compare well with other vessels of this type. The model steered well with no excessive loss of steering control when turning from a dodging maneuver or when turning before the wind.
Although the model occasionally surfed on the crest of a breaking wave, causing the model to yaw slightly to one side, the steering control was soon regained after the passing of the wave. It was considered unlikely that the vessel would have been endangered from broaching, since the speed of the vessel was much lower than that of the overtaking waves. The wavelengths were estimated from meteorological data at the time of the casualty and reported to the formal investigation. The effective steering control and good directional stability provided by the steerable court rudder would also have reduced the chance of broaching. The relatively high freeboard of this vessel prevented large quantities of water from coming on board the trawl deck when surfing away. Water was observed to come up the stern ramp onto the trawl deck on the Arab, but only when fishing and when the stern doors were open. Model experiments carried out in the Solent showed that with an intact hull and with a quantity of water on the factory deck, the vessel was not endangered. It is possible that water on the factory deck came from the processing pumps. However, it was evident that with the factory deck in the partly flooded condition, water tended to come on the trawl deck and accumulate on the starboard side and just aft of the funnel. There are in this region access doors to both the factory deck and engine room. Since it was not possible to endanger the model in an intact state, a flooding hypothesis was considered in which the factory deck was assumed to be in a partially flooded condition. Various openings on the trawl deck were also assumed to be open to allow an additional ingress of water to the deck below. Experiments to test this hypothesis were made with the openings in the model and with the factory deck partially flooded. It was found from these tests that the model was severely endangered. These experiments demonstrated that with water already on the factory deck and with the vessel listing to starboard, water in substantial quantities would reach the trawl deck and enter the access door to the factory deck. Substantial quantities of water would also be effectively trapped under the starboard engine casing forward of the funnel. The consequence of these events would be for the vessel to admit more flood water from openings in the starboard side and for progressive flooding to take place throughout the ship. This investigation carried out by the National Maritime Institute into the stability of the MFV Gaul in a seaway has found that in the intact condition, this vessel had more than adequate reserve of stability compared with the minimum criteria recommended by IMCO. This stability was entirely sufficient to prevent capsize in the sea states expected in service for a deep sea trawler. The findings of this investigation are consistent with the view that the Gaul was not lost as a result of inadequate intact stability or poor sea-keeping qualities. It would seem most probable that her loss was due to the effect of the severe waves and wind and the possibility of steep wave conditions at that time in the area of the North Cape Bank, associated with some factor other than deficient intact stability. It must be emphasized at this stage that the reasons for the loss can still only be speculated upon, since there were no survivors and no last-minute radio message.